كتاب الله دستوري وخير الخلق أسوتنا أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بلى من أوفى بعهده واتقى فإن الله يحب المتقين الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه ومن استنى بسنته إلى يوم الدين اللهم اجعلنا منهم ومن الذين آمنوا وعملوا صالحات وتواسوا بالحق وتواسوا بالصبر آمين يا رب العالمين السلام عليكم قرآن ويكلي in today's small reminder, I'd like to share with you the 76th ayah of Surah Ali Imran. And in this ayah, Allah Azza wa Jal talks very beautifully about a connection between one expectation He has from us and the concept of taqwa. So we all have heard about the consciousness of Allah or the fear of Allah or protecting ourselves from the dis- displeasure of Allah and the term taqwa and how many times it's used in the Quran. And I wanted to share this particular ayah with you because the goal of Ramadan, as Allah Himself describes, is described is لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So you can have taqwa. So you can develop a consciousness of Allah and a sense of protecting yourself from crossing the line that Allah wouldn't want you to cross. That's taqwa and that's the goal of Ramadan. Now in this particular ayah, it's actually in contrast. The ayah before is a long one. And in that ayah, Allah talks about the people of the book. If you trust them even with a dime, they won't give it back to you. And there are those, if you gave them piles of wealth, they'll return the entire thing back to you, meaning you can trust them with large sums of money and wouldn't have to worry about it. And they're among the people of the book, you know, the Jewish and the Christian community, they're those who are con artists. So they're both. And the idea behind that is don't judge all all of them, don't be, you know, either overly trusting of them and at the same time don't be overly skeptical of them. They're all individual cases. But after that, Allah makes this case. And this case is, بَلَا مَنْ أَوْفَى بِعَهْدِهِ وَاتَّقَى فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُتَّقِينَ on the contrary, rather, whoever would fulfill their promise and therefore expose or show, demonstrate taqwa. Taqwa in this ayah is actually the ability to fulfill one's promises. We think of taqwa as a spiritual thing. We think of something that connects to Allah, that connects to, you know, the more prayers you do, the more dua you do, the more spiritual exercise you engage in, that will build your taqwa. And that's true, that's partly true. In the Qur'an, when taqwa is discussed, it actually a lot of the times is discussed in terms that we wouldn't expect. For instance, if you told your boss you're going to show up at 5 o'clock and you show up at 7 o'clock, or if you, were, you told your teacher you're going to hand in the assignment in you know, two days and you took two weeks, all of those are fulfilling your word. Small or big manifestations. Remember the previous ayah was about a, either a dime or a pile of wealth. Right? So small or big, and this ayah is not about the people of the book anymore because it's bala man awfa wa taqa, whoever would fulfill their promise and de- therefore demonstrate taqwa. The wow here is wow al bayaniya, what's called a wow of clarification. Here's how you put that simply. Rather, whoever would fulfill his promise, i.e., whoever would have taqwa. It's like Allah equated those two things. SubhanAllah. You can find people today that may think taqwa lies in appearance or may emphasize the outwardly, some of the ritual aspects of Islam at the expense of the moral and exp- at the expense of their dealings with people. And in this ayah, it is as though Allah is saying that the outwardly should actually manifest with the inwardly and also with the dealings with people. That our dealings with people have to be right. So this is the month that we, you and I have to fix our relationships with people and fulfill the obligations we've made. Now there are two kinds of obligations, very briefly. Obligations that are on paper or contractual where you actually owe someone something or verbal, right? That's one kind, where you physically made an agreement. But then there are relationships, and each relationship is a kind of agreement too. In other words, my relationship with my parents is a type of agreement. My relationship with my spouse or my kids, or even my neighbor. These are all a kind of unwritten, unspoken, you know, kinds of agreements in which you owe something to them and they they owe something to you. In light of this ayah, part of my taqwa is to do my proper diligence towards my children, towards my spouse, towards my parents, towards my friends, towards other people. And so I pray that we're able to really get the benefit of taqwa in this month. And by doing so, and part of doing so is that we're able to fix our relationships with people by fulfilling what we owe them, by not shortchanging what we owe them, whether it's in terms of time 
or it's in terms of money, or it's in terms of any favor they may have asked of us and we promised, us, promised them to fulfill, or you know, anything else, that any expectation they have of us that is rightfully expected from us and we're not, we haven't been doing so far. So I pray that we're able to become better in those fronts and as a result of that, we're able to get more and more of a taqwa of Allah because at the end of this Allah says, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُتَّقِينَ no doubt about it, Allah, then in fact Allah loves the people who show taqwa. In other words, Allah loves this effort that you and I are going to make. Barakallahu li wa lakum, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Amantu billahi wa malaikatihi wa kutubihi wa rasulihi wa liyawm al-akhiri wa al-qadri khayrihi wa sharrihi min Allah wa al-ba'thi ba'd al-mawt لا إله إلا الله آمنت بالله وملائكته